Hello friends. We are going to talk about fractions and decimals and how they are related. So when we talk about fractions, you have all now worked with our fraction circles, correct? This is one whole. This is the unit, one, okay? If we had 10 of these, I would stack them right here and we would say now there are 10 holes. So this number represents the one, one hole. If we had 10 fraction circles, we could have, we could write the number 10 and it would be stacked up maybe to there. If we had 100 of these fraction circles, we would stack them up and they would stack up maybe to there because they're very thin. If we had 1,000 of these fraction circles, we would stack them up and they would go pretty high, probably pretty high. But what happens when we go to parts of a whole? Well, we have learned that we can cut up our fraction circles into pieces or parts, and that those are what fractions are. They are fractions of a whole. That means we break the whole apart and we have pieces that all go together. Well, when we are looking at our decimal line, decimal has the root word deci, which means 10. So we're always going to go in groups of 10. So if we go to the right of the decimal point, we have cut this into tenths. And you can see it's written one over t, one tenth. So this is one tenth. This comes from our family of 10. And when we write one tenth, we need to make sure and include that decimal point. So this is what that looks like. It's point one, one tenth. Well, if we move two places over, if I were to cut that one tenth up with my scissors into 10 more equal parts, one of those equal parts would be one hundredth. One one hundredth is shown by putting a zero between the decimal point and the one because we have point, zero, if there weren't anything here, zero, one. It's two places over. So it's point, zero, one. That means one hundredth. This is one hundredth of this. That means 100 of these would make one whole. Well, if I were to take that one one hundredth and cut it into 10 really teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. Very, very, very tiny. So small, you can hardly see. <laughs> Look at how small that is. That would be one thousandth. And you see, I have I have three place values to the right of that decimal point. So again, here's our decimal point, right? Decimal point, one place, two place, three places. See, one place, two place, three places. This teeny tiny little section of this is one thousandth. I don't even think you can see it on camera. It's so tiny. Can you see that? <laughs> so that means a thousand of these slivers would make up one hole. What if I kept going? Well, I don't have the means to cut this tiny sliver into 10 more slices, but we can pretend. 
let's say I cut this into 10 more pieces. I had a really tiny little laser cutter. And then I had one 10 thousandth. See? And it's one over 10 thousandth. One 10 thousandth. Can you see that? This is how fractions are related to decimals. So with this point one, that's called one tenth, we can also write it like this. One tenth can be written this way and it can be written this way. How would we write one hundred? one one hundredth. This and this are the same. How would we write one thousandth? Well, it's just the same thing. It's one over one thousand. And of course we would do the same thing over here. We would just write one over ten thousand. But what about if we're going to the left? We did this in class before we had to stop coming to school where we learned that if we go to the left, we're multiplying every column by 10. If we go to the right, we're dividing by 10. Everything gets divided by 10. Okay, so let's move over to the right. Let's see, what is one? Well, one is just one over one. This is equal to that. What about 10? <laughs> it's just like that. It's 10 over one. 10 is the same as 10 over one. We can keep going. 100 would just be 100 over one. And we talked about that before in our classroom where I told you, if you have a whole number, it can always be written with a one underneath it, a one in the denominator place. So there's 100. What about 1,000? Well, 1,000 is the same as 1,000 over one. See? And, I want you to notice that there's still a decimal point here. So could I also write a one with a decimal point to the right? Yeah. I could add a decimal point there. I could add a decimal point there. I could add a decimal point there. We don't because it's implied. We know that there's a decimal point at the end of every number. We only use it when we want to show the parts of a whole. So we see the decimal point here and here and anything past this but we don't really see the decimal point here because we choose not to add it because it's not necessary. So this is the introduction to fractional decimals. I hope you enjoyed it.